introduce the president of the 71st session of the UN Gen General Assembly, Mr. Peter Thompson, who will uh, address this conference. Yes, Mr. Peter Thompson. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I do apologize for the power outage this morning, uh, no doubt related in some way to all that snow. Um, excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, firstly, thank you to Malta and to the Royal Academy of Science International Trust for organizing today's forum on this, the second commemoration of International Day of Women and Girls in Science. I commend Malta for its strong commitment to promoting the role of women and girls in science and for its instrumental role in the General Assembly's decision to mark the 11th of February as the um, day on which um, we celebrate the International Day of Women and Girls in, silent, in Science. Such in initiatives invigorate our global efforts to promote gender equality and raise awareness of the critical role that women and girls play in science and technology. They decisively promote women and girls' equal participation in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, many of you here today would be familiar with the recent popularity of films and books that portray the true stories of the contribution that women have made in major scientific advances in human history, contributions that have too often been overlooked. Whether it be women mathematicians working on NASA's early space program, or a woman cracking the Enigma ciphers and helping to end World War II, or women playing a pivotal role in discovering the structure of DNA, history is replete with examples of women's scientific contributions going unrecognized. While it is gratifying that for some of these cases the historical record is now being corrected through due recognition being afforded to these pioneering women scientists and women mathematicians, what these late acknowledgments cannot do is unwind the intergenerational impacts that have already occurred from the sidelining of women scientists and their accomplishments from the mainstream view. It's time for us to play catch up. When we look across the world and see that 62 million girls between the ages of six and 15 are not in school, that girls on average lag behind boys still in secondary school completion rates, that women earn on average between 20 to 30% less than working men and shoulder the heaviest burdens when it comes to unpaid domestic and care work, and that women only account for some 30% of the world's researchers, it is clear that dedicated policies and programs are needed to overcome the systematic, systematic barriers that restrict women and girls from enjoying full and equal access and participation in both education and science. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when world leaders came together to adopt the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, they provided humanity a universal master plan to transform our world. One which, if implemented urgently, effectively, and at scale, will enable us to eliminate extreme poverty and reduce inequality, live in peaceful and inclusive societies, combat climate change, protect our environment, and achieve gender equality. In adopting the 2030 Agenda, world leaders recognized the critical role of both women and girls and science and technology in driving the implementation of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. As global attention shifts to implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, it's clear that in order to unlock the catalytic potential of both of these areas, Specific strategies are needed to empower women and girls and give them every opportunity to succeed. This begins with quality education. As policymakers, it's critical that we invest in educating 
girls and equipping them with the skills and opportunity to become the scientists, coders, tech leaders, engineers, and mathematicians of tomorrow. Such investments must be pursued as both a critical driver of sustainable development and a human rights imperative. Only thus will we shape a sustainable future for our world. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the huge influence of the media in modern societies cannot be understated. The media helps to educate individuals and set community standards and shape social norms and expectations. The flip side is that the media portrayals of women and girls have often served to entrench narrow gender stereotypes and undermine perceptions of women's equal rights capabilities and roles in society. As part of our efforts to achieve gender equality, drive sustainable development and inspire girls to take up careers in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, it's essential that we actively look at ways to counter these stereotypical depictions and partner with the media in championing our cause. Excellencies, as a he for she and as a grandfather to three young girls, I am committed to doing all I can to promote gender equality during the 71st session. I'm committed to expanding opportunities for women and girls in education, science and technology, and to strengthening the role of women and girls in implementing all 17 sustainable development goals. You know, don't quote me on this because I didn't check, and you're supposed to check all speeches in this august hall before you uh, make them. But uh, I do recall from last year that in my region, a region which does not have a, uh, I come from Fiji, and it's, it's a, the South Pacific is a region which is lagging behind on, in areas such as women's representation in Parliament. We're lagging badly. But uh, I did read uh, last year, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure I'm right on this, but I'll have to check that remaining bit. Um, I did read last year that in our regional university, the University of the South Pacific, which covers uh, you know, over 13 countries and is, uh, has its main campus in my hometown of Suva, that uh, we now have more female than male science students at the university. So you know, there is, what we're talking about here is not something that's not achievable. Uh, it's, it's happening in various parts of the world and must happen everywhere. So anyway, in uh, the 71st session, what I have done uh, as a um, early step was to write to the heads of government of every country in the world, urging them to include the sustainable development goals as part of the education curriculum of every school. You know, the idea was to uh, not just to broaden awareness of the, uh, all of the 17 SDGs, but to, uh, for, for young people to understand the logic in the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda, the logic which is necessary for the survival and, of them and their children. As, uh, as I'm sure you all know, we're heading towards a precipice of unsustainability in this world if we continue on our current path. And the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Change Agreement take us away from that precipice. But if young people are not taught about the Sustainable Development Goals and they don't realize that they are the rights and responsibilities and the master plan, then uh, we uh, are going to fail in our efforts. Anyway, I'm happy to tell you that I'm getting very good responses to that letter from uh, heads of state from uh, uh, countries all around the world. So uh, that's achieving some progress. And of course, goal number five on gender uh, equality is an essential part of that lesson. Last week, I went across to Silicon Valley to meet with the leaders of uh, the tech companies there to discuss ways that we can work together to promote achievement and raise awareness of the sustainable development goals across our world. Uh, the example I gave to them was that through the incredible mediums which they have created, a celebrity can slip on a street in Los Angeles and bruise her backside and within 12 hours the whole world knows about it and is talking about it. Uh, whereas the master plan to save everybody from that precipice of unsustainability at best, I think only 10% of the world probably knows about it. So how could they help us 
use those same tactics that they have used so effectively on things like celebrity status to uh, get across these vital messages for humanity. Uh, I'm happy to say they've taken up that challenge and um, the discussions uh, have proved to be a prelude to what will happen here in this hall on the 17th of May, which is a high level event on innovation and connectivity. You have to imagine a world where every single human being is going to have access to the internet because that will be the case within 10 years. And I saw the proof of that in Silicon Valley last week. Imagine what that means for teaching science. Imagine that, 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 that in the back blocks of the remotest country, you'll be able to get the best scientific lessons available. You don't need to go to Stanford or Cambridge to get that lesson. You'll get it from connectivity. I'll also be convening a high-level event on education on the 22nd of June. Both of these events will include discussions on ways that we can promote equality and inclusivity in our global efforts to drive implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. I encourage all of you to attend those two meetings. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, speaking as a grandfather, like the great majority of us, I want a future for our young ones that is safe and secure, one which enables them to reach their full potential in life. By working to counter the impediments that exist you are helping the next generation of women scientists, mathematicians, and leaders to confidently take up their rightful places in society. I commend you to your work. Thank you.